Having stated the general principles, let me explain why the application by Mr. Harvey Davis for his son's deferment was rejected. Even though Mindev recognized that his son, Mr. Ben Davis' achievement in obtaining a senior contract with Fulham Football Club. First, Mr. Ben Davis is playing for Fulham Football Club as an English national, not a Singaporean citizen. Mindef is not privy to the contract signed between them, but we assume this published information is correct and that the father must have his reasons for doing so. Second, Mr. Harvey Davis has consistently refused to indicate when his son would return to serve national service, if deferred. The father replied to MCCY, Sport Singapore SG, and Football Association of Singapore, stating, quote, we are unable to commit to a date for his return should he be playing professional football in the United Kingdom or Europe. In addition, it is also a possibility that Ben could be offered a new two-year contract in 2019 after the first year of his pro contract, just like he has been offered a new two-year pro contract halfway through his two-year scholarship contract. Or he could be sent out on loan or sold to another club. There are a lot of variables all dependent on his development and progression. My emphasis, but unquote. Third, if he was not granted deferment, the father indicated that Mr. Ben Davis would still proceed to sign the contract, and he has done so. The reason given by the father was that his son would only return to fulfill his NS commitment if he is unsuccessful in his professional career. In fact, Mr. Harvey Davis went further after Mindef rejected the application. He said that he would consider the option for his son to renounce his Singapore citizenship in order to pursue his career. The father's responses make clear his intent for his son to pursue a professional football career to the fullest. If Mr. Ben Davis will not give up his senior contract, which he is now offered, which provides for an allowance of a few hundred pounds a week to serve his national service, it is even more unlikely that he will return to serve national service if he subsequently gets offered a contract worth many times more. And if he's not given a further contract with Fulham Football Club, the father has said that he may find other clubs which his son can be loaned to. The application by Mr. Harvey Davis for his son's deferment is to further his son's professional career first and to the longest extent possible. He has been quite open about this. And you would have read what he said. Singapore and the interests, including his son's national service obligations, are secondary considerations, if at all. There has been no indication, commitment or plans as to how Mr. Ben Davis would help football standards in Singapore if deferred. Mr. Harvey Davis has urged Mindef to approve deferment for his son so that it would serve as an inspiration, he tells us, for the thousand students registered with his company, JSSL, 500 or so who are local. For your information, JSSL Singapore Junior Soccer School and League Singapore is a youth football club and academy business run by Mr. Harvey Davis and advertises itself as having links to Fulham Football Club. Mindev could not find any valid grounds to approve the application of deferment by Mr. Harvey Davis for his son. There is no commitment to serve, Singapore's, serve Singapore or our national interests. To grant deferment to Mr. Ben Davis to pursue his personal development and professional career will be unfair to the many others who have served the NS dutifully as required and not at a time of their choosing. It would also erode the basis on which our courts have upheld the Enlistment Act passed by Parliament and punished those for not fulfilling their NS liabilities, but instead pursued their own personal concerns and careers. 
As the writer, Mr. Patrick Tan Siong Kwan wrote to the Straits Times Forum, quote, the defense of our country cannot be a matter of serving when it is most convenient. It is a responsibility that every man must take seriously when called upon, regardless of race, family connections, or financial status. It takes personal sacrifice and putting the country before self. Otherwise, there will be no Singapore tomorrow." Unquote. Mr. Suresh and I, who wrote to the MINDEF feedback unit, said this, quote, if Davis is proud of his red passport, he must do what every Singapore teenager does to dutifully observe the national service obligations, unquote. I know it must be difficult for a 17-year-old, Mr. Ben Davis, to receive, receive such public attention. It was never Mindev's intent. But we had to respond to his father's claims to the media, to explain to members of parliament and Singaporeans the basis of our decision on this crucial national policy. I've dealt with the application by Mr. Harvey Davis for his son, let me now address the important issue that MPs have asked. Can and how do we achieve sporting excellence, including for team sports, if national duties are to be fulfilled? I think there was a second limb most of members asked. National service does require sacrifices, certainly personal ones. But performing one's national service duties and pursuing national aspirations for sports excellence need not be mutually exclusive. Many talented sportsmen have served national service as required, and yet at the same time raised the level of their own skills and the teams they played with. To Mindev's knowledge, there are three other footballers who have also been talent spotted to take part in trials for professional leagues overseas. All three have completed their national service as required. Saifullah Akbar and Iksan and Ifam Fandi. In fact, Saifullah Akbar and Iksan Fandi asked to be enlisted early, presumably so that they could complete their NS first to pursue their professional careers. Prior to enlisting, Saifullah played for the under-16 national team, and he was actually spotted by a professional Australian club at age 16, but he went ahead to enlist for NS. During their national service, Irfan and Iksan trained and played for the under-22 national team during the 2017 SEA Games. They were supported by the SAF and home team. Irfan and Iksan are now playing for the Young Lions in the Singapore Premier League and representing Singapore in regional football competitions. I understand Irfan has gone for trials with European clubs, including an upcoming trial with Sporting Braga. And Saifullah and Iksan are slated to follow suit at CD Tenerife and Braga. I'm not a football fan, so these clubs are quite foreign to me, but you would know it, football fans out there. I think this is a good sign for football in Singapore and talented footballers. Talented footballers, Ben Davis include, included, can emulate the example of Irfan, Saifullah and Iksan to complete their national service duties as required and also advance their professional football careers. In fact, Saifullah Akbar will finish his national service tomorrow. And he's going to try out for a European club. You may have read his interviews. They asked him, how did you feel when you call called up for national service? He said, I tried to have a positive attitude. I told myself that army training will strengthen me. And now that I finish NS, I can go on to pursue my dreams. For him, it was never a choice that he had to make not to fulfill his national service obligations like everyone else. He said, I had to train harder, but he remained, he kept a positive attitude. That's the kind of example we want young Singaporeans to emulate. For the recent SEA Games in 2015 and 2017, MINDEF supported those competing whether they were competing individually or as a team. We, enlisted, we adjusted some enlistment dates for national servicemen 
so that they could participate in the games first and enlist later. This included some footballers. Those who were already enlisted were given time off to train to maintain their peak performance. For the upcoming Asian Games later this month, so far, 10 of our national servicemen have been given a short postponement, postponement of their enlistment of a few weeks. Or if they have been enlisted, have been given time off to train for the Games. This includes a member of the water polo team who clinched their 27 straight Sea Games goal last year. We wish all these sportsmen every success and hope that they can continue to do well for Singapore in the Asian Games and beyond. MINDEF has done more. Beyond these provisions, we've offered disruption to full-time national servicemen competing in these games. But very few have chosen to disrupt, presumably because they're able to train adequately in the SAF. These many examples show that MINDEF has exercised flexibility towards sportsmen competing in team sports, a question asked by Dr. Intan and Mr. Mohammad Faisal and others. But we have done so without transgressing the fundamentals of national service and still maintaining equity for all national service. MINDEF will work with MCCY, Sports SG, and other relevant agencies through various pathways that can allow sportsmen to do well and still fulfill their national service obligations, whether it's individual or team sports. <clears throat> 